Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Last night I went out to uh, Artomatic, which is a big art show that goes on uh, every year or so uh, here in the DC area. Uh, basically what they do is they take over a uh, large building that is either going to be renovated or going to be torn down, uh, and they dole out uh, different sections of the building, different office rooms and everything like that, to a bunch of local artists who then, in some cases, can do whatever they want to the room and in other cases uh, can just uh, hang their pictures uh, or art of any sort uh, up for presentation to the public. Uh, this year, it's a building that's going to be uh, renovated, so there's some walls that can be painted, some walls that can't be painted. There's some fantastic installations uh, that, you know, are taking full advantage of the fact that that section is probably going to be uh, torn out or completely repainted. Uh, so I spent a while walking around looking at all the different uh, bits of visual art and hanging out with some friends of mine who are visual artists, painters, photographers, sculptors, uh, you know, hands-on people when it comes to art. And uh, I listened to some conversations and it occurred to me uh, during one of those conversations uh, that there are really two different ways that you can consume uh, art and, and a lot of things in general, but art uh, was the theme of the evening. Uh, there is active consumption and there is passive consumption. Now what we're very familiar with is passive consumption. Passive consumption is uh, sitting down in front of the TV and uh, just letting it all hit you. It's going and uh, flipping through, uh, you know, a uh, photo book and looking at the photos. Uh, it's going to a gallery and just looking at the uh, at the art and just having it wash over you. Uh, listening to music is another uh, another way that that can be uh, a passive experience. And, and that doesn't mean the art doesn't affect you. It, it just means that you are allowing it to affect you. And then there's active consumption of art. And when you actively consume something, that means you're putting effort into figuring it out, into uh, appreciating the technique, into getting yourself deep into the art. Uh, you're, you're thinking about what the artist may have been thinking, what they're trying to say with it. You're not just reacting. You're actively digging for more information about it. And with visual art, uh, it's very easy to be either active or passive. Uh, now, I'm not much of a visual artist. I've dabbled over the years in some drawing, in some sculpting. Um, it's really not my thing. I don't have the patience needed to develop the technique. Uh, and I get very frustrated when what's in my head doesn't make it onto the paper or into the clay the way I see it in my head uh, right away. So I don't do a whole lot of visual art. Uh, I have been much more of a writer over the years, and there's really no good passive way to absorb someone's writing, because you have to actively read it and interpret the words, so they create images in your head. Uh, the closest to passive consumption of a literary work that I've been able to come up with is the audiobook, where you're listening. Uh, to it, like music. Um, and so you're not having to do that translation from words on a page to images in your head. You're dealing with the cadence and the uh, intonations of the person reading it. So it's a little more passive, but because it's language, and it's language that can be different depending on the subject and the author, uh, so different uh, that it triggers the imagination and gets parts of the brain working that other visual art bits uh, trigger all on their own. 
So reading and uh, digesting a uh, work of literature is always an active experience because there's always some extra translation that needs to go on. And I thought that's both really neat and a little problematic uh, because that means that all of these other visual artists have an audience that can accidentally stumble across their art and be passively observing it, hearing the song, playing on the radio, uh, wandering through a gallery and suddenly being uh, moved by a piece of art. And they can take that passive consumption and turn it into an active consumption by actively going after more information and examining how it makes them feel and everything like that. But for writers, right off the top, you have to have an active audience. You can't passively read something. There's too much work involved in it. So that's interesting, and it explains why so many people kind of let reading fall off as they get older, and it's because of that extra work. But there's also all the extra benefit that comes from it as it triggers more things in our heads. Uh, so I want to know, how do you consume? Do you consume actively or passively most of the time? Uh, and while we're at it, how many books have you read this year? Because we're almost at the end of the year. And I know I'm nowhere near uh, where I'd like to be with how many books I've read. Uh, and the number is so ridiculously low because I do all of my reading online and I read articles and websites. I don't get around to a lot of books, which bothers me, but at least I'm still reading. So let me know down in the comments uh, how you consume and what you've been consuming lately. If you like the things I have to say, give me a thumbs up right down there. If uh, you're subscribed, thank you very much for being subscribed. And if you're not, hit the subscription button down there and get notified when I put these things out. And if you know anyone who is interested in the sort of stuff that I've been posting about, uh, share this with them so they can get involved in this conversation. Uh, I'm Kier. That's it for tonight. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.